Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Jennifer Marie Vio, where I teach you different ways that you can make money online working from home. If you are one of my subscribers, you know that I like to teach you about different transcription jobs available and also provide you with a ton of different tips on how to transcribe. If you are one of my subscribers, you'll see I have a list on my channel of transcription job for beginners, uh, tips on how to improve your transcription, English and writing skills, tools and tricks to transcribe faster and get more jobs. And also, if you go to my Sparkle English channel, you can see I have all sorts of different videos teaching you about how to use quotation marks, apostrophes, commas, and the difference between all sorts of commonly confused words in English. So I recently did a video on Transcribe Me Punctuation Guide Part 1 where I talked about commas, conjunctions, plurals, sentence construction, and more. And this is going to be part two of that video. So this guide will focus on what Transcribe Me wants you to do when you are transcribing and how to use proper punctuation as they want you to do it when you are transcribing these files. This will help you not only when you are a transcriber for Transcribe Me, but also help you pass the test. In this video, we'll review five different grammar and punctuation topics that you need to follow to become a transcriptionist for Transcribe Me. We're going to talk about hyphens, colons, semicolons, quotation marks, and ellipses. And if you don't know what any of these are, you will find out and learn in this video. So the first one we're going to talk about are hyphens, and these are hyphens right here. We use hyphens to form compound words and to link prefixes to other words. It's important to correctly identify compound words because the meaning of the sentence may drastically change otherwise. So this right here is a hyphen, okay? Let's look at this example. I saw a man eating alligator. I saw a man eating alligator. What do you think the difference is between these two sentences? Because they are very different. The first one, a man-eating alligator. We have a hyphen here to combine these words because what this would mean is a man-eating alligator would be an alligator that eats men. And this is combined, these two words are combined to make an adjective, man-eating alligator, describing the alligator that it likes to eat men. If you say, I saw a man eating alligator, that would mean that you saw a man eating alligator meat or eating an alligator, okay? Now you will not encounter a ton of different compound words, but there are many of them, so it is important to know. So these two sentences have different meanings based on using or not using a hyphen, okay? In compound words, the hyphen shows that the words have a combined meaning when they are linked together. So combining man-eating means that if you said a man-eating dinosaur, a man-eating dog, you would be calling that dog or that dinosaur saying they're a meat eater, okay, saying that they like to eat men. Okay, the main type of compound word that you will deal with in transcription files that needs to be hyphenated is the compound adjective. A compound adjective is when multiple words join together to make an adjective. So just like we said before, man-eating alligator, that would be a compound adjective. These are usually hyphenated only when they come right before a noun, okay? So I'm going to show you all of these different examples and the word that comes after the compound adjective is a noun. So for example, I am on a sugar-free diet. Diet is a noun, so this here is a compound adjective, sugar-free. It is an old-fashioned home. He is a high-spirited child. We were in a long-lasting relationship. So all of these are compound adjectives because when you mix them together, they make an adjective, okay? If you are ever confused about whether or not something is a compound adjective, then just type it in Google, for example. Type in common compound adjectives or type in the word two words that you're confused about, okay? The next one we're going to talk about are colons. The colon and the semicolon are commonly used in written works, essays, and informal writing. However, 
they should not be overused in transcripts. So you will see colons and semicolons all the time when you're reading an article or reading a novel, but in transcription files, we try to limit the usage. So use them as sparingly as possible. We will only use colons and semicolons in Transcribe Me in these situations. Use a colon only when you have a complete sentence that introduces a list. This is the only time in Transcribe Me they want you to use a colon. The only time when you have a complete sentence that introduces a list. So let's look at these three examples. Jack needs a lot of new office supplies, colon, notebooks, ballpoint pens, and pencils. The professor specializes in three subjects, art, language, and history. He was going to buy three things, coffee, milk, and eggs. So all of these are complete sentences, and they're introducing this list right here. If this sentence said he was going to buy coffee, milk, and eggs, you wouldn't need to put a colon because it wouldn't be a full sentence introducing a list. But this is, he was going to buy three things, coffee, milk, and eggs. This right here is a full sentence. And so we'll use a colon to start introducing this list. Okay? Now on to semicolons. Use a semicolon to join two closely related sentences without a conjunction. Never use a comma splice, okay? So a lot of people will use a comma splice, and a comma splice is when you use a comma to connect two sentences instead of a conjunction or a semicolon. So for example, you could not write this. Rock music is okay. Punk music is better. Normally, you would use a conjunction like but. Rock music is okay, but punk music is better. However, in a transcription file, you have to transcribe what they are saying. So if they do not use a conjunction like but or and or or, then you have to use a semicolon to connect the two sentences if they are closely related. So for example, rock music is okay, semicolon, punk music is better. Because these are two independent complete sentences that are closely related, what we can do is add a semicolon to connect the two sentences. Now pay attention here, we do not capitalize the first letter of the first word in the second half of this complete sentence here, okay? We have a capital for the first for rock because that's at the beginning of the sentence, but because this, we're connecting it to this sentence, we do not need to use a capital here. Unless, of course, it was a name or a name of a country or a proper noun um, where you would always use a capital letter, okay? Here are some more examples. I ordered fish. My dad ordered pizza. Again, semicolon and lowercase letter here. My puppy is adorable. He loves to cuddle. Lauren opened the desk drawer. It was empty, okay? So all of these, we are using a semicolon to connect two closely related sentences. Okay, now quotation marks. First of all, we will use quotation marks for direct and hypothetical speech. Now, with Transcribe Me, they follow the American style usage of quotation marks. And in the American style, quotations should be set off by a comma and punctuation should go inside of the quotation marks. Um, if you're transcribing for a British company or something like that, one that uses British rules, the quotation would go inside and the punctuation mark would go on the outside. But for this, the punctuation has to go inside of the quote, quotation marks, okay? So examples. So then he asked me, comma, Quotation, capital letter, do you want to go away for the weekend? Question mark, because it's a question, and we close it with the quote marks. Another example, I spoke to my boss and she was like, comma, quotation, capital letter, listen, I don't think you're right for this job, period, and quotation mark at the end. So always remember, 
you're going to have the quotation mark at the end of the sentence and at the end of the punctuation. You can also use quotation marks for spoken punctuation. Example, if a speaker says quote or quote, unquote. What this means, and this you're not likely to encounter many files like this, I never have before in my life, but if you're transcribing an audio file and someone actually says the word quote or unquote, then you would add that as a quote instead of typing out quote. So for example, if you listen to an audio and they said this, I had a meeting with Javier and he said, quote, I promise I'm getting the promotion this quarter. You would transcribe this as, I had a meeting with Javier and he said, comma, quote, I promise I'm getting the promotion this quarter, period, quotes, okay? So you would not type quote, you would instead put a quote. And of course, always setting off the quotation by a comma. And finally, we're going to talk about when you use ellipses. So as before with colons and semicolons, we try to avoid ellipses when possible. So a lot of people are using ellipses all the time, and I think this is one of the main reasons why people fail the transcription exam, because they are using ellipses when they hear a pause, and you're not supposed to do that. So important. Do not use ellipses in the middle of a sentence to demonstrate that the speaker has paused. I put that twice here. I'm sorry. So, no. Will you marry me? So, if you hear a long pause here, do not put dot dot dot. It doesn't matter how long the pause is because eventually they do finish the sentence. So, you don't say, will you dot 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 marry me. You would just type, will you marry me? Even if the speaker paused for like 30 seconds, it doesn't matter because eventually they finished the sentence. So you have to type it as a full sentence. Will you marry me? The only time we use ellipses is to mark an incomplete sent sentence. So a sentence that never finished followed by at least three seconds of silence. So if this here was, will you, and there are three seconds of silence passed, then you could put, will you, dot, 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 question mark, but only if the sentence is not complete and never completed. So here's an example. Imagine this is a conversation between two people on the telephone. I think I'll be there on, well, I hope I'll arrive then. You're arriving on, sorry, I'll be in New York on Tuesday morning. So here we would only put dot, dot, dot because these sentences are incomplete. They never actually finish the sentence and it was followed by at least three seconds of silence. So one, two, three, okay? Now, if the silence is shorter than three seconds, then please mark the change of thought with dashes instead, and we'll use double dashes. So, I think I'll be there on, well, I hope I'll arrive then. You're arriving on, sorry, I'll be in New York on Tuesday morning. Okay, so if the silence is shorter than three seconds for an incomplete sentence, we will use double dashes two double dashes. And also, I want you to look at the difference here. With the double dashes, we would have a lowercase letter, almost as if this is one sentence. However, if it's an incomplete sentence and at least three seconds of silence has followed, then you will have a capital letter to start a new sentence. Okay? So just sort of look and study the difference between these two. And I recommend you bookmark this video or write notes in your notepad so you remember the rules for this because you will encounter this sort of situation a lot, not only in the test, but also when you are transcribing for Transcribe Me. And this is a very important rule that they have on how to use ellipses. So thank you very much for tuning in to watch my video on punctuation for Transcribe Me. 
Make sure to check out part one of my Transcribe Me punctuation guide where I review run-on sentences, sentence fragments, commas and conjunctions, plurals and possessives. Eventually I will do an advanced punctuation guide because there are some even more advanced rules for situations you won't always encounter but you might encounter for Transcribe Me. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can stay tuned for any other videos I release related to Transcribe Me, to transcription and making money online working from home. Again, remember to subscribe to my Sparkle English learning channel, Sparkle English, for more in-depth lessons on punctuation and grammar so you can become an excellent English speaker and writer and transcriptionist. Thanks once again for watching and I will see you in my next tutorial.